Welcome everybody back to the how-to editions uh, for TELUS Business Connect. Today we're going to work with an ATA, uh, which is the Cisco SPA122, which is Cisco's model of ATA for turning an Ethernet ac access or Internet access into dial tone or telephone access. Uh, we're going to use a couple of the connectors on the back of this device uh, to allow connect uh, connection to the outside world. And uh, first off, we're going we're gonna to plug in all of the required parts uh, to make this fired up. And the first thing we do, of course, uh, is take the e Ethernet access, which is uh, plugged into into my uh, my home network here, and that goes into the e Ethernet port. And then you have uh, the network cable coming out of your PC uh, that will plug into uh, just temporarily. This is just to get the configuration done. We'll we'll disconnect that later on uh, out of here. And of course, I have a uh, uh, a butt set. Uh, or butt end set that's used in, in telecommunications uh, for testing, and we're going to use that for our analog phone. So we'll plug that into the analog phone. Um, and now we'll power up the device, and that's just a standard 5-volt uh, power supply that comes with it, and we'll plug that in, wait for this to boot up. Uh, power indications on the device will show the power light and uh, the Internet uh, connecting uh, to the device. Once this device uh, stops flashing, then... Um, uh, then it's it's fully powered up, and we'll continue from there. And there we go. The device is now fully powered up. What we're going to do is go off hook on the uh, on the telephone access and use my my butt in set. We have to gain the IP address of the WAN port uh, on this device so it can be programmed uh, remotely. So we'll just turn on my my butt set. Of course, you're not going to hear dial tone, uh, but the 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 programming code to go into configuration is four stars. So I hit one, two, three, four. Configuration menu. And the configuration menu is one one zero pound one one zero pound. There we go. Okay, so we have the IP address. Um, I've already connected to it before, so I know what the, the IP address is. And now we're connected. Um, we can actually use this IP address for, uh, for further communication once we... Uh, Okay, now we have the, the IP address. We have to go into the device and, uh, and add that device to our, uh, uh, to our repertoire of hardware that's in the, in the phone system, of course. Uh, at the very bottom of the phones and device screen, you'll see an add your own device button. Uh, you'll click on that, add that existing phone. <clears throat> that is, existing phone would be assigned to a particular user, whoever it is. I'll use myself in this, in this example. And you'll give it a name. Typically, what uh, what I do is I'll I'll give it a name of the device and the extension number, um, so it shows up in the uh, in device settings. I've already added this. The very next step is to uh, put in the 911 address, um, and I've already added it. So uh, we'll skip that step, and I'll show you that I've got that ATA already installed here. And you click on that device, and on the right-hand side, you'll see the Setup and Provision button. Uh, you'll click on the Setup and Provision button, select the model of this device, and that device, of course, is the Cisco SPA122 ATA. Next button. Um, now, of course, because we're connected to the ATA adapter with that analog uh, analog phone, I've already done the 110 pound uh, code to get the current IP address of the device, and uh, that allows us to, uh, to to log into it. Now, I'll put the IP address uh, in here once uh, once I get it, which uh, I did get that 192.168.1.123, um, and we'll do that in a second. Now, I'll open up another browser here. And I'll put in the IP address of the device that uh, actually is physically connected. These typical ATAs will uh, will always give a 192.168.15.1 is the gateway uh, of the uh, of the router portion of the device, which we will not be using. Um, but uh, that 192.168.15.1 is your access to it. So we'll log into it. 168.15.1. And of course, we should get the Cisco uh, login page from that device. And there it is. And the default login for the username and password uh, is admin. And the password, of course, is the same, admin, admin. And what we're trying to do here is a couple of things. 
uh, once we log in, we need to change the uh, username or the admin password to something other than the default uh, just to secure it. And that's done through administration. Under the user list uh, that you'll see on the left hand side under management, go into user list. And there's that first user, which is the admin. We'll hit the little uh, edit button on that list. And there's the admin. The old password, of course, is admin, all lowercase. We'll give it a new, uh, a new password. And I'll use welcome one as our password. There we go. We've now changed the web access admin. And the settings are now saved. There we go. So that is now saved. And we'll go back to uh, the network setup uh, on this uh, on this device because we have to set up um, the actual remote admin um, in uh, in the administration. Um, sorry, it's in administration. There we go. So web access management. What has to be enabled is admin access, of course, enabled. HTTP remote management. This is the most important part. Is remote management that has to be turned on. Um, and once that's turned on, and you hit submit. Now the device can actually be programmed through the web interface uh, on the WAN port, which is a remote, a remote access side. Okay, and that's complete now, so we can log out of this device, shut that down. And now I can put in the, the web access, which is 192 that we gained earlier, 168.1.123, and we'll hit a next. And of course, it steps us through those same settings that I've uh, already enabled, which is the admin access, the remote management, uh, HTTP, and uh, then you hit that submit button. So next, and it's going to ask for the admin username and password. So admin, and that welcome one that I changed it to, hit one for next. And now connecting to the device, and it's going to provision that device via the web interface, and now it's complete. That's all there has to it. Done. Now the final test, of course, is to verify that the ATA is actually producing dial tone, um, and we'll save that. And I should be able to go off hook on my test phone and listen for dial tone. It's uh, reset, uh, reboots, and now we hear dial tone. I should be able to dial another extension number within the system. I just dialed extension 109. This happens to be one of my test phones behind me. And there goes the call. Good. And it's ringing the phone uh, that's sitting behind me. So that's accessed. Uh, it works. And uh, we're all set. Now, another option that you might want to look at is if you're using this for a fax device, uh, is to actually set this for um, uh, for use with a fax machine to verify that uh, that you've got access to uh, the correct codec, and I'm going to log back into the uh, the 192.15.1 uh, interface, which is the local admin, and that's admin, and we changed it to welcome one. There we go. And under voice settings, uh, we'll have line one. And of course, uh, the easiest thing to do is just to go down uh, to the, um, uh, you can do control F to do a find, and just put in the number 38, because we're looking for T.38, um, fax enable. And there it is there. Oh, jumped. There it is. So fax enable T.38 is turned on, which is yes, that's perfect. And uh, that's the only setting you have to worry about to make sure that it is enabled. And once it is enabled, then you're all ready to use that for a fax machine. Uh, now, the other consideration is if you're using it for a fax machine, that you'll want to make sure that that phone number that is pointed towards it is set for voice only. So if we have a DID that's pointed to it, and I'll just grab a DID here real quick and pointed to that device. Okay, so extension 101, I'll just use my as an example. I have a local number here in Vancouver, and I'm gonna set that for voice only, because we don't want the uh, uh, Business Connect uh, service itself to, um, uh, to respond to fax tones on that inbound call uh, when that device starts to ring. So we'll make sure that that is set for voice only, so it does not answer. Um, inside Business Connect and it forwards that fax inbound call directly to the ATA.
And uh, the only other thing you have to verify is that uh, extension 101 has that device under call handling and it's enabled to ring. And uh, there's the ATA, so I'll make sure that it rings. We'll turn all the other ones off. And there's our ATA. You save that and you're 100%, you're complete. Thanks again. Please subscribe and uh, share with your colleagues. Um, if you've appreciated this, uh, this video, please uh, hit the like at the bottom of the screen. Much appreciated. See you again.